Hi, this is Dr. Prashant again, back on the Emotional Quotient series. We learned a lot about empathy, didn't we? I hope that you are improvising on some of them, putting some of them into your day-to-day -day life and that has brought about some change. Write back to me with your comments, with your suggestions, if you need any more recommendations with regard to that. Today, I have one more very, very interesting thing that is applicable no matter where you are in your life right now. Career, yes. Personal, yes. Spouse, yes. Kids, yes. In-laws, yes. That's a big one. In-laws, yes. Correct? So what I'm going to talk to you about today, relationships. Relationships and emotional quotient. How do they gel together? Well, as we know, emotional quotient is like the bedrock of everything that I'm talking about. And why shouldn't it have its shadow on relationships? If you are emotionally more intelligent, it's just a corollary that your relationships are only going to get better. So if you are going to trust me on this one, just follow three things that I'm going to talk to you about today. Just three things. Number one. Number one is increase your reactions. Give better reactions when you are in conversation with others. Okay? Give better reactions. What does that mean? What does better reaction mean? Better reaction means only this much. Now, you might be a very ebullient, very bubbly, very cheerful person, but the person you are actually conversing with, communicating with, might not be. You might be in an office situation where your bubbliness comes through, but the situation actually demands a more serious demeanor. Or it might be the opposite. You might encounter somebody who's very bubbly, very serious, but you know, not so serious, but you know, there might be a gross mismatch. I hope you're getting what I'm saying. At times people withdraw into their shell when they meet when they meet a person of the opposite personality. This happens and communication is severely affected when this happens and critical dialogue is lost. What happens in the process of this, this is that the bedrock of all communication again stands on relationships and relationships get affected big time. I am sure you know of the thing that a first impression happens only the first time. Imagine if this were to happen in your relationships in a personal level, your husband, your spouse, your kids teacher of your kids, okay, even at your workplace, your boss, your junior, just imagine all the different people you, you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and you will see the light as to what I'm talking to you about, okay. So make sure your reactions are situation appropriate. Does that mean that you jump in with that person and react exactly the same way that he wants you to? Or you draw him to your stream of ebulliences or being very sad or morose or uh, serious or something. No, I'm just saying be logical at that point in time. Speak only about what you have been spoken to. Practice more active listening that we have been through before and your problems will be far, far away. You will have very strong relationships. All right, get that? Okay, now that's, that brings me on to point number two. Now, point number two is increase your diversity. When I say increase your diversity, I mean to stay, I mean to say start noticing, start communicating with all kinds of people who you come in touch with. Don't restrict yourself to only your office. Don't restrict yourself to only your house, only your community, or only your apartment complex, or something like that, or your clubhouse, something like that. Speak. Speak to as many people as you can. I mean, it need not be a very lengthy conversation. It need not be a conversation that you have everything to gain for, you have stake in, but it can be anything very general. Like your maid, like your sabjiwala, like the, the, the person, the grocer, okay? Like the person who you buy your fruits from. Strike up a small conversation. See the kind of reaction that you elicit from them you will get a different perspective as to what, what kind of change you can bring about in a person's mundane life when a total stranger comes and you know strikes up a conversation it's like you know hi how are you so how has been the day today how has been the day today it's very hard i really appreciate that you are sitting on the street and selling fruits all through the day now imagine the person has been doing this from dusk till dawn from dawn till dusk and you are this one person who cares for him in spite of this uh, you know, very hot climate and that will like you know make him think that chalo, somebody cares about me yeah? 
I should do that again. And he will probably have a talking point about this and you will be the first person who caused this cascade effect, this domino effect in his life wherein you know he felt more happy. Isn't that something? You actually caused him to think about relationships in a different way. You paid your amount, that's it, the service was done, everything was fine, but you actually initiated something for him. Meaningful? Valuable? Yeah, I know, it's, it's very valuable. I have done it. I do it all the time. Strike up, a, strike up a conversation with that Ola driver or Uber driver or your rickshaw driver and see the magic happen. See the magic happen. Yes, you need to be very careful about what information you're giving out, but this is not so much about information giving as much as striking a chord. I hope you're getting that. The third, most important, most simple, but least practiced thing, I'm very sorry to say this, but least practiced thing is smile. Smile more. Smile more and more and more. Don't laugh. Everybody knows you have teeth or dentures, but still smile more. The more you smile while you're giving a reaction in a conversation, your personality, your character, you as a person come out in full picture and people will appreciate this. People will appreciate this. Alright, really, I'm telling you, this must have been told to you in so many movies, so many novels, so many books, so many proverbs, so many seminars, so on and so forth. But the more, the more it is said, I say, the less that has been said about it. Alright, one small smile, one small smile on your face can enlighten somebody's very gloomy day. Think about it, just smile. See, you must, you might be doing some very tedious task and you reminisce about some very uh, nice moment in your life that has happened like years ago and suddenly, automatically, you bring up that smile and how it enlightens your day, how it fills your heart with warmth. Now, wouldn't you want other people involved with you to also share this kind of joy? Smile more, smile more. It's such a simple thing. Cost effective? can do it all the time, all right? And who wouldn't want to be your friend if you can smile all the time? Just smile, okay? Let it not be a right smile, let it not be an artificial smile, a brought upon smile, but practice your smile. That's another thing, guys. Practice your smile. Go in front of the mirror or take your camera, phone, switch on to the selfie mode and practice your smile. Put on a nice, gentle, warm, simple, natural smile and see the magic that you will be reflecting onto others' faces. Okay, That's bring me to the, that brings me to the end of today's video on relationships and emotional quotient. I'll be signing off with this. I hope to see you on my YouTube channel going ahead. This is Dr. Prashant signing off. I am the father of a very creative eight-year-old boy, a loving husband to a very, very supportive wife, and the son of a pair of very inspiring parents. This is Dr. Prashant signing off. See you. Good day.